So the goal of this video is to give you guys all the steps that I took in order to go from 5'8 to 5'12 in my first year of climbing. So I played rugby for a solid 15 years of my life and I quit on my junior year of college for a multitude of reasons. And that summer, it was the first time in what felt like my entire life that I genuinely had nothing else to do. So I decided to take all my fishing equipment, all my camping equipment and just go on a road trip. And the goal was to fish and then stop at a few national parks. One of the national parks that I stopped at was Yosemite. And that was like the first time that I ever saw people climbing. I got lucky enough and I caught two people going up the nose, you know? There were a few people with like telescopes and everything. So it like, it wasn't that hard to see. And just seeing that was enough for me to be like, oh, like, let's try that. So for the next year of my life, I did nothing else but climb. To be clear here, I was never a 5'12 climber, okay? I was pretty solid of 5'11A, 5'11B. And usually 11 C's maybe took me like two, three tries. And like just for the memes, I was never able to get an 11 D. I have one 512 to my name. Was it a soft 512? Like, I don't know. There were several people in the crack that day and everybody agreed that those two, three clips for the crux were pretty par for the grade. So I have that going for me. So anyways, the steps that I took in order to improve fast could be summarized into three. The first one is that I took climbing as a sport. I know that climbing is a community and you know a lot of people show up to the gym in jeans they climb in jeans and a lot of people don't take it very seriously and that's perfectly fine there's absolutely nothing wrong with that i wanted to get better at it fast because that would allow me to go do more stuff outdoors so i took it like a sport i was lucky enough that even on those days i still had a background in strength and conditioning that that was just how i was brought up in sports you know and i was smart enough to like piece together a training program that sort of worked the second step was that i climbed a lot and I did it all. I buried my training quite a bit and I just didn't care what it was. I was having fun and I just wanted to do more. So I did the steep routes, I did the steep boulder problems, I did the slaps, I did the long sporty routes, the pumpy routes, I just didn't care, I did it all. And the third step is that I took my rest seriously. You know, like climbing is one of those sports where like it's technical enough that even when you're tired, you can show up and still do something. I just resisted the urge to do that and took my rest days pretty seriously, even when I was traveling and climbing on the road. I would go for a run, I would go for a hike, I would go on a bike ride, I went to the gym. I did other things that allowed me to stay fit and stay in shape, but were not climbing. So now let's break down each one of those steps so I can hopefully give you guys some actionable steps that you can use in order to get better. So the first step is about looking at training for climbing, like you would look at training for any other sport. It's about becoming a better athlete and then when you go out and compete or try the routes, try the boulders or try whatever it is you want to do, you just go hard and have fun. So in order to train, you just follow basic strength and conditioning protocols. You know, this is the stage where you need to ask yourself, okay, what am I bad at? Like, do I show up to the gym or show up to the crack and do I just get gassed? You know, is endurance my problem? Or I just never gassed out, but I just can't stick those big movements. I just can't seem to hold on. I'm just not strong enough. I'd say that one of the things that helped me the most was the fact that I had a background in rugby. So I was in pretty good aerobic shape. You know, I was in pretty good condition. Sadly for me, like I was a pretty hefty guy. Like I've always been a pretty heavy guy. Back in those days, I weighed like 190 and like most of my weight was in my legs. So even though I had good aerobic capacity, my arms were not conditioned for climbing. So how do I fix that? I just climbed a lot and I was able to climb a lot because I was in good physical shape. So if you just can't climb that much, you need to work on your aerobic capacity and you work on your aerobic capacity by doing a lot of work at low intensity. So go on more runs, go on more bike rides, you know, or just stick to very easy climbing and just do a lot of it. It's gonna help you get more conditioned. That's how you build your engine. You build it at lower intensities. Still keep one hard day a week, you know, one bouldering day, one day when you show up and try those hard routes and go hard, but give yourself a decent break in between attempts. Most of your training, just make it easy on yourself, but do a lot of it. And you might be thinking, I'm a boulder, like I don't care about that, my routes are like five movements. It doesn't matter. Your aerobic engine is what recovers you in between attempts, okay? So, if your aerobic capacity is not good, you're not gonna have any gas left after two, three attempts. And that's not what you want. You wanna be able to show up to the boulders and have like 10 good attempts on you. You know, so still work on your aerobic capacity. Plus a lot of people ignore the fact that to get to most of these climbs, sometimes you gotta walk like 40 minutes, 50 minutes. You know, you don't wanna show up to the climb tired. So again, 
work on your capacity. Now, if your problem is strength, then you just need to get stronger, okay? Yes, you can get stronger with climbing, but I would just suggest you start doing more weightlifting, okay? Go do some strength work, go do some big, heavy compound movements with a barbell. Do the presses, do the rows, do the squats. You know, there used to be an old blog by uh, Black Diamond. I haven't been able to find it, but it read, uh, one of the subtitles read, um, yes, having a bigger deadlift is not gonna help you be a better climber, but it'll probably get you to stop whining anytime the approach is more than a couple miles. That's the point of doing strength work as an athlete, is to help you do everything else that you need to do. It's not to get strong for the sake of getting strong. You might be thinking, oh, but it's just that's just finger strength. Yes, that is part of it. Okay, but making those big reaches, jumping and holding on to those holds, whatever it is that you need to do, doing those big dynamic movements, it's more than just finger strength. So if that's a really big area of issues for you, you might just need to get stronger overall. This is of course on a per case basis, but if you've never done any sort of sports, if climbing is your first sport and you struggle in this area, take the time to do a proper strength block. Okay, if you plan on climbing for the rest of your life, two months of two days a week is gonna be a flash in the pan. It's gonna be gone before you know it, and you're gonna be thankful that you did it. You know, one of the things that helped me a lot in climbing a lot and staying healthy more than anything was the fact that I was a pretty well run guy. I didn't have huge deficiencies. And lastly, regarding rest and training, get used to periodizing your training, okay? And I know that's a big word and people throw it around and mean to mean whatever they want, but Let's make it very simple here. Periodization is nothing but putting things on a calendar. And more than anything, it means that when you show up to the gym, you know what you're doing. You have a goal for the session. So is this an endurance session? Is this a power session? Is this a strength session? Okay, is it a rest day? Is it an active recovery day? What is it? Just ask yourself that, okay? And with time, you'll learn how to piece things together and you'll be able to like assemble a more structured program if you want to. If not, you'll probably still see better results by just showing up and having a clear goal in mind. So am I just climbing a lot today? Is it an endurance day or am I actually trying hard? If you're climbing a lot, your rest should be pretty minimal. If you're trying very hard, your rest should be pretty long, you know, and if you're doing strength work, just do strength work, okay? In the beginning, like if strength work is really an issue for you, have some days that are just strength. Just go to the gym, okay? Like I said, two months of that and you should be fine. And then you can just climb every day and add a little bit of strength work at the end of your workout. Is it an active recovery day? Do I need more endurance work? Am I just out of shape? Go on bike rides more, go on hikes more. Like there's other things to do. Don't completely obsess about the sports that you're training for, okay? And allow yourself to step away from them every now and then. It's healthy. Especially climbing. Like climbing, it's fun on its own. You get to be outdoors. You get to be doing all these things, meeting people, talking to people. Like have days that are just fun. Call them technical days. You know, when you show up, you just climb very well, you talk to people, you have fun. Not a big deal. Yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'm always more than happy to answer any questions, okay? As always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. If you're interested in learning more about training, I put together a 10 email series with the best nuggets of wisdom that I've collected over the past 20 years. It's just 10 emails over the course of 10 days. You can subscribe with a few links and subscribe whenever you'd like. And that's the video, so yeah, thank you for watching. It is important to draw wisdom from many different places. If you take it from only one place, it becomes rigid and stale. Understanding others, the other elements, and the other nations will help you become whole.